Hi everybody, Anne from Super Stitch, and today we're gonna to talk about sergers. And why do you need a serger? Well, there's so many cool things you can do with a serger. So let's just talk about some of the things we can do. And this is from a class we did. So you can actually put a zipper in with a serger. You can make a bag with a serger. You can make a ruffle. You can make the whole thing completely on a serger. You could make a whole t-shirt on a serger, a sweatshirt. Um, you can, of course, roll, rolled hems, beautiful rolled hems. This is different than the rolled hem I showed in my other video. You can gather. There's just a little t-shirt. Again, a great sewing on knits, nice little finished edges. Uh, we can do pin tucks. These are just all from little sample classes that we've done. Again, here's another gathered ruffle and it's gathered and surged all at the same time. So every, your seams are nice and finished. You can even do heirloom sewing on a serger. I actually applied heirloom lace with my rolled hem. Do a blind hem on knits. Apply elastic and it just goes on and on and on. Now here's even, even made lace on the serger. So we're just going to introduce them today. I'm going to talk about two of my favorite sergers and just talk about the features. So we're just reviewing these two sergers today and then keep watching for more techniques. We'll add some tips and tricks on sergers in the future. So I'm going to start with one of my favorite sergers here. This is the Elna 664P. The reason I love this serger, it's such a go-to serger, especially if you're new to sergers. So this is a great serger for someone who's just getting into sergers. They, they're not familiar with it and they wanna know what they can do and how they're going to do it. So right here is what I love about this serger. This program reference chart is built right into the serger. So it lists 12 different serger techniques, some of which I just showed you. They're all right here. All I have to do is dial in to the technique I want to do. And it tells me what tensions to set, what, how to set everything up. Everything is right here. You don't need to go find your manual. You don't need to look anything up. It's right here. So this is a great serger to get you started surging and jump right in and go from one technique to the other. So we're just going to show some of the other features on this one. And we'll just do a couple little samples for you. First of all, how is a serger different from a sewing machine? Well, a serger has um, one, two, sometimes even more needles. This one has up to two needles. You can use one or both. You can use the left or the right or both left and right at the same time. And then you have an upper and a lower looper. So sergers have loopers and needles. Um, now where people get intimidated with a serger is threading the looper. So we're going to go through and show you how this particular serger makes that pretty easy. So this is my lower looper, my upper looper, and we're going to show you how to thread those. And most sergers are usually color coded to show you how to thread them as well. So it's color coded here. This even shows you how those different, um, all those 12 different techniques will look front and back on your fabric. And there's a little storage under here to hold some of your serger accessories. Um, you also have what's different on a serger, and I'm actually going to take the foot off just so you can see this. A serger has a front and a back set of feed dogs. So when we talk about differential feed, we're talking about how these feed dogs feed. And we'll talk about that in a little bit here. You also have, if you look on the foot, this is a left needle and this notch is my right needle. Uh, the other thing that you have on a serger are you have cutting blades. So this is my upper blade and you can move that out of the way if you don't want to cut. And this is my lower blade. And one of the important features on a serger is being able to adjust that. So it's called adjustable cutting width. So this blade, if you notice, is moving in and out. So that determines how much fabric gets cut. And then if you bring the lower blade up, now it's going to cut. So you can choose to cut as you surge or you can drop that knife and not surge. Then you also have, I'm gonna drop that knife to show this one. 
Um, I actually, I'm going to go ahead and unthread. So the, the tip, a tip to unthread, this is completely threaded. Now I'm going to unthread it and show you how to thread. What you want to do is hold on to this chain because all four threads are now chained together. You're going to hold on to that. And I turn my hand wheel one revolution completely backwards and that's going to unchain it. And then I can just unthread everything. So everything's completely unthreaded and then we'll show you, we will thread everything. So with that unthreaded, you'll be able to see this a little bit better. This is my stitch finger. This is my left needle, my or left and right here. So this is my stitch finger. When you're doing regular serging, the stitches are forming around that stitch finger. On this particular serger, I have an S here and you can see that the stitch finger is in to do regular serging. In order to do rolled hemming, you want to remove that. So we'll show you how to do that. So with my knife dropped, on this one, I'm just gonna put my thumb here and you see how I'm moving that left blade out of the way. And then I can just pull that stitch finger right out. So now my stitches are just gonna form right around that little needle right there and give me a nice little rolled hem. So we'll be showing that later. So let's go ahead and go over threading on this one, which is going to be all sergers are basically going to have an upper looper, lower looper, and your needles. So we'll go through the order of, of threading. What's important on a serger is to thread the loopers before the needles because the needle threads are going to wrap around that lower looper. If you thread your lower looper with the needles threaded, you're just going to keep breaking. So that's a little tip. If you ever need to change your rethread your lower looper, just pull the needle threads out of the needles. Don't thread your lower looper with the needles threaded. So we're going to thread the um, loopers first. Now this indicates to thread the lower looper, then the upper looper, then the needles. It's really just important to just thread the loopers before. So I actually like to thread my upper looper because my lower looper is in the way of the upper looper. So that gets in my way. So I like to do the upper looper first. The main thing is to thread the loopers before the needles. Now, when you do remove your thread, make sure you completely unthread. Don't ever leave your thread just hanging up here because it can get caught in and create some problems. Now, I'm just using, for now, I'm using a maxi lock serger thread. So serger threads are generally a, um, a 50 weight polyester thread. Um, you could, the main thing, again, like I always say, is to use a good quality thread. Um, you just don't want to use a very weak thread. thread. Your sergers will create a lot more lint than your sewing machine with all the cutting and everything. So just make sure you use a good quality thread. But um, to do a lot of our decorative techniques, that's where we can get into using your stretch threads and woolly nylon threads and pearl crown rayon. And that's what, when we get into having some fun with the serger is when we start using some decorative threads. And we'll be covering that in some of our tips and tricks. Um, so I'm going to start with my upper looper. And I'm just going to drop the thread into here. You'll notice there's an extra hole here. If you happen to be working with a, a real slippery thread, then um, you would come back and go through here. So I'm just going to snap under this guide here. What's important here is... Um, my needle, my tension discs are open. You want to make sure that your presser foot is up, which opens the tension discs. You'll notice I drop my tent, my foot now, and that the tension disc is closed. So if I'm threading with that closed, the thread's not going to get in there. So always make sure that you're threading with the tension discs open. I'm just going to bring it down. I'm just following the thread guide here into this guide here. And so if I look here. I just go into this yellow. I'm just following the thread guide. So whatever serger you have, you're just usually following the color coding. From there, I'm just going to go up into this little guide right here. And then I'm just going to feed it right through the eye of the looper. Usually your sergers are come with some tweezers, which might make that a little bit easier to feed that in there. And this is where, quite often, where you'll have your decorative threads. So just a little tip if you're working with some decorative threads that are maybe hard to thread, 
We'll go ahead and just show you a little tip. If you are using a decorative thread that's hard to thread through the loopers, just get yourself a little dental flosser and put the thread through there and then you can feed it right through. These are great to have as a little serger accessory. Oh, upper looper's threaded, now I'm gonna thread the lower looper. Same thing, I'm just gonna drop it in here, come under here, in here, and then into my guide again. Your lower looper has a hole at one end that the thread needs to come through. So if you have, if your th machine does not have a self-threading lower looper, you have to pass it over and get it through there. So this serger, I'm just gonna feed it through my color-coded guides here. And then if you notice, there's a little arrow right here. And I'm just gonna push up on that arrow. When I do that, it exposes these two guides. So all I have to do is just lay the thread into those two guides. So I just lay it in here and here, and I turn the hand wheel one revolution toward me, and it just threaded it into that other end of the looper for me, and then I simply just feed it into the other eye of the looper. And I've threaded my lower looper. And I can actually just leave the thread hang here and my upper looper will come get it. So now we'll thread the needles. Okay, now we're going to thread the needles. Now one nice feature on this machine is I do have the ability to raise these needles up. Sometimes if you're putting them in or out, and so to change the needles, you're just gonna loosen these screws and take those needles out. It does come with a needle um, inserter and threader that we'll show in a minute. Um, so what I can do, if it makes it easier to thread these needles, is I can raise the needles up. So on this particular serger, if I line up this arrow here, I'll be able to pop my needles up and I'll show you that. But while we're here, let me go and explain what's on the side here. This is my stitch length dial. You'll notice I have an R for rolled hemming. And this is, this is my stitch length. This is my differential feed. And uh, we'll talk about that more in a little bit. So one is the default and then you can go up or lower with the differential feed. We're gonna talk about that later. So differential feed is a very important feature to have on a serger. This is what's called my pretension slider. This is set for standard. This is set for rolled hem. And again, we'll talk about those again. So those are all features that are on the side of this machine. So right now I have it set, so we'll show you how I can raise my needles. With those arrows lined up on the side, now I'm, um, I can drop my foot and push in this red button and pop that needle up. So my, needle, my needles are up. That just might make it a little bit easier for me to take them in and out. You can very easily see where the left and the right needle is, and then I can thread them here or I could thread them when they're down. So I've popped them up, but I'm gonna thread, so I'm gonna raise my foot back up. So I'm starting with my right needle. Again, I'm just gonna come down into my tension. I come straight down. I come straight over, I come up, up on the right, down on the left, just as you would with your take-up lever. I go into my right needle here, and then my thread guide here. Now this serger includes a little needle threader, and you can always get these. Um, you see a little Y here, and you see a V. I put the thread in the Y, I pull back to make a loop, I rotate to the V, I put the V at the top of the needle, and I just simply slide down when I get to the eye of the needle. It just pops the thread right through the eye of the needle, and I've threaded my needle. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my left. I'm gonna thread the other needle with it down just to show you that. So I'm gonna push the button and drop it down, but again, I'm gonna raise the foot back up to thread the needle, or to get it through the tension. Same thing, guide here, straight down up on the right, down on the left, thread guide, thread guide. Now I'm gonna drop my foot. Again, what it does is it puts tension on the thread and gives me clearance to thread the needle. I put the thread in the Y, pull back to make a loop, rotate to the V, and I slide down. And I've threaded 
both my needles. There's also a little clip here that I can pull that loop through. So now I want to draw all the threads under the foot and to the back. Sometimes it's easier if I drop my knife and then I can just draw everything to the back. Now if you're going to cut, make sure that knife is up. So let's just review our settings here. We're just going to do a basic four thread surge to start to identify all the parts. So number one is my basic four thread surge. This is telling me my, my needle tensions. Notice they're all color coded. So I'm just at three across the board here. This is my stitch length. I've set that at three. My differential feed I have at one. This tells me to put in both my left and right needles. This tells me to have this right down here is my three, four. This surge will also do a two thread surge. So if I were doing a two thread technique, it would tell me to put that at two. This tells me to have it at the three, four. This is a little spreader that comes with it. So there are techniques when you do not use the upper looper, but when you're not using the upper looper, you have to attach this to it and that is included. This is telling me that I'm not using that spreader. So that means I am threading my upper looper. This is telling me where to put that stitch finger. It's telling me to have that in the S. So I put this back to the S position. This is telling me to have that knife in the up position. So my knife is up. This is telling me to have my cutting width at normal. So that was that cutting width. And you'll notice here, there's a little guide right on the front. So this is this little window indicates where my lower knife is set. So this is normal here. If I go over here, I would have a wider seam. If I go over, I'm gonna have narrower. So this would be cutting more fabric away. This would be adding more fabric in the cut. So I would have a wider seam. So I'm moving it out. So this is telling me it's at the end. Now that also can be changed depending on your fabric. Cause if I'm doing a, um, like a, a fleece, a thick, heavy fleece, I might be adjusting that. So that, that is a recommended setting, which can also change depending on your fabric. I'll just go ahead and sew a four thread surge. Things I can watch here. This is my left needle. This is my right needle. The dotted lines here is left, solid line is right. If I have my fabric here at 5 8 that's telling me I'm gonna make a 5 8 inch seam. So it's gonna seam at 5 8 of an inch and it's going to trim and finish and cut. So just to review, we're just selected program number one. We've set everything up, we've threaded, and now we're ready to go. And on a serger, you can simply just kind of lift the toe of the foot and just start sewing. So it's trimming, cutting, sewing at the same time, and you can just let it run off. So this is how it should look. You've got your left needle and your right needle. Your upper looper is on the top. Your lower looper is on the back, and they should meet right on the cut edge. So if you're not getting a stitch like that, you might need to either adjust your tensions, adjust your cutting width if the um, if you've either got too much fabric or not enough fabric in the cut, you can adjust that cutting width. Um, so that's your basic um, surge. So what I'll do is I'm going to change to one more program just to show you how easy it is to change from one thing to another. And then we'll re just review the serger. I'm gonna switch to a three thread flat lock. So maybe you've never done a flat lock. Maybe you don't know what a flat lock is. I'm gonna switch to program number 12 and it's gonna tell me how to set up for a flat lock. So I'm simply going to dial in to number 12. So this is gonna show me, first of all, to remove my right needle. So I'm gonna remove the right needle. I'm gonna leave this at the three, four where that is. I'm going to leave my um, stitch finger in at the S. I'm not gonna use my spreader. Um, actually, this is the standard, the lever on the side. This is my stitch finger at the S. My knife is up. Sometimes when you're doing flat locking, you might have the knife down. And then this tells me, again, my cutting width is at normal. If the cutting width is, if the knife is down, then um, that won't matter. 
This is gonna tell me to reduce my left needle tension. So I'm gonna turn the left needle tension down. I'm going to turn my upper looper tension up just a little bit and my lower looper tension. I'm gonna have my stitch length between two and three. I'm leaving my differential. So everything is set up here. So how do I remove my right needle? Remember what I'm going to do, all, the, all four threads are chained together, so I've got to unchain them. So I'm going to hold on to my thread. I'm going to turn my hand wheel backward one revolution, and then that'll allow me to unchain. So now I'm simply going to remove my right needle thread. And again, make sure you completely remove it. Don't leave it hanging. And now I can turn that hand wheel so that I can pop this up here and I can remove my right needle. So I'm just gonna loosen that screw there and just pull that right out and pop that right back down in. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a decorative thread in my upper looper. When I'm doing flat locking, the thread that's gonna show is the upper looper thread. So we'll show you a trick there. And this is where you can use your nice decorative threads. So this is a pearl crown rayon. It's a nice heavy thread here. Um, now sometimes some of these decorative threads can be kind of loose and um, puddle. So that's when you're gonna use a thread net. The proper way to use a thread net is you put it in the bottom and then you wrap it around the base. You don't put it over the top because then it'll just come out and into the serger. So you put this into the base and I'm gonna wrap this around the base and that's just gonna keep that thread from puddling. So that's the proper way to use a thread net. Now I wanna put, I wanna replace this blue with this decorative thread. Now I could just completely rethread it, but so one of the tricks on this type of a serger, it's completely mechanical, that I could just cut this thread and we'll do the tie-on technique. So I'm gonna cut the thread here I'll remove my little cone there. And I'm just gonna tie this on and then pull it through. So that's a trick you can do on most mechanical sergers, which also makes it easy. You can do this for both of your loopers. Now what'll help is if I turn that tension down to zero while I pull that through. So I'm just gonna get a hold of my blue thread and you can see it just pulling through. Sometimes you might need to kind of help it through some of the guides. And there I've just threaded my upper looper. So to do flat locking, all you're going to do is you're going to, um, if you're gonna fold your fabric wrong sides together instead of right sides together. And I'm just gonna run this through here. I'm not gonna drop my knife, but I could if I wanted to make sure I didn't cut that fold. So I am trimming that a little bit. So. so then what I'm going to do is I open it up and I pull it flat on the back side. And that is called a flat lock. So you can use it to embellish, but there's so many techniques. We'll just do one quick one. If you wanted to hem sportswear, I'm gonna turn my hem up. I'm gonna turn it up again. I'm gonna trim just a little bit of that fold. I'm gonna open that up. So I have now hemmed my garment and decorated it all in one step. So that's our flat lock. So again, all I had to do was just go to the technique I wanted to do, and the machine set everything up for me. There's so much more we could keep going on this serger, of course, with all 12 techniques that it does. But just to kind of wrap up, again, if you're looking to get into serging, this is just such a nice serger. It's very reasonably priced, and it just gives you everything you need in a serger. You need to have at least um, four threads, you need differential feed. You need to be able to switch your stitch finger to do rolled hemming. Um, this have a self-threading looper, so you've got your differential feed. You've got everything you need on a serger. It comes with a nice little accessory case with everything you need there. So we're gonna move on and show you another serger 
that um, it's going to give you a little bit more. If you like everything you had here, we've got it even easier and more features. Now I'm going to talk about our Genomi 2000D Air Thread Serger. So if you liked everything that we had on the previous serger, you can do everything here. It's just easier and just there's so many things that are more accessible and just a lot easier. Plus um, one advantage of this serger over any other serger is it's run on ball bearings. So it is very strong. You can just surge through anything on this. So if you need something a little more heavy duty and just really easy to just sit down and start surging, this is a serger for you. So let's show you what we've got. So what I like about this serger is everything is accessible to me right here, even when I've got the door closed. So I don't have to stop and open the door to access my stitch finger, my cutting width, my um, upper and lower blades. So this is my stitch finger here. All I have to do is boom, just like that. Now I'm set to do rolled hemming. I'm back to do surging. It's that easy to switch from surging to rolled hemming, just slide that stitch finger right out. It's just so quick and easy. My cutting width, again, is available right here. So I can adjust it on the fly if I need to. I don't have to stop um, and um, open anything. Although the 664D did had the, the accessory on the side. And this is my blade. My upper knife is right here. Again, I don't have to open anything. I can just push and turn and my blade is down, I push and turn, and my blade is up. So it's very easy, very accessible. Um, I've got my um, tray on here to cut my threads, and then I've got, I've got my tray here. So with everything here, I, everything's accessible while I'm surging. But the real advantage to this serger is, of course, the air threading. I'm just gonna open up here, and I'm ready to thread. So again, we have our upper and lower loopers, and we have um, our left and right needles. We've got our upper and lower blades here. So when I open the door, this, if this lever is here, I'm actually surging, and this again gives me a color-coded preview of what the stitches should look like. And then if I want to thread, I push this over, and then I'm gonna turn my hand wheel until it locks. So you see right here, it has now locked for me to shoot my thread right through to my loopers. Then this is going to point to whichever looper I want to thread. So it doesn't matter, I can thread either one first. So I'm pointing to my upper looper right now. Again, it is color coded. So I'm gonna thread my upper looper. So I simply, again, just take my thread, just lay it in here, come through the guide. And again, my, my foot is up to open my tension disc. I'm just gonna come straight down and place it in this guide here. And then all I do is take about an inch of thread and I'm gonna drop it right down into that hole. I'm gonna pull up a little bit of slack. I'm just gonna take this lever and then we wanna watch right here. This is my upper looper. When I lift this, when I drop it down, it's gonna shoot the thread through my upper looper. So now to thread the lower looper, I simply just move this to my lower looper and we're going to do the same thing. Just drop my thread down in here, lift my lever, and this is my lower looper right here. So literally in seconds, I can have my upper and lower loopers threaded. Now if you are using a heavier thread like the Pearl Crown Rayon or something, you can um, do two things. You can, if it doesn't go flying right through, you can always just tie on an extra liter of regular thread. Um, it does come with a little wire loop or two, but it's just so easy to just have the thread just go right through. So it works awesome. Um, and now we're gonna thread the needles. So again, I'm coming down. I'm coming straight across. I'm gonna come up on the right, down on the left, into my guide. Now I only have my right needle in right now, so because I'm gonna, the first thing I'm going to do is a rolled hem. So I just have my right needle in. So I've gone through the guide here. Um, at this point, I'm going to drop my foot. Now right here, this is my needle threader. I have got an L and an R, so I can push this to the left to thread my left, push it to the right to thread my right. 
So I've pushed this to the right to thread my right needle. I simply take this lever and push it down. I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna pass it from this guide here. Just place it into this little notch right here and then push this back up and I've threaded my needle. So we've got our air thread for our loopers and automatic needle threads for both needles. So you can have this thread, this serger threaded up very, very quickly, very easily. The first thing I'm gonna do on this one is a rolled hem. Now when I close the door, there's actually a sensor in here so this serger will not let you sew unless the door is closed and it will automatically push that lever back over so it knows that we're regular, ready to serge. I can very, very easily now do a rolled hem because all I have to do is just slide that stitch finger right to the R. I don't have to um, open anything. It's just very, very quick and easy to do that. There's a pretension slider right here that's going to tighten my lower looper for me to do a rolled hem. And then I can simply turn my stitch length dial to the R for rolled hem on the side. And then I'm just gonna turn my stitch length dial to the R for rolled hem on the side. So I've got my stitch length turned down. I've got my pretension slider here and I've got my stitch finger to the R here. So now I can simply just start sewing. So this is just giving me just a beautiful rolled hem, just, just perfect. You do have a couple adjustments. If I turn this back to the standard, I'll have what's called a narrow hem, so my, roll, my um, upper looper is not rolled around the edge. So you've got a couple different options here. This is gonna give me a flatter finish. So you can see here, my upper and lower loopers are meeting just as it would have a, with a balanced serge. And then if I put my stitch length back up to three, but I'm gonna put it back to tight. This is called a Pico edge. It's just a more delicate, I use this for um, more delicate fabrics or for pin tucks, things like that. So just like that, I was able to do three different, basically rolled hem techniques it was just that easy to slide that. We're gonna talk about um, your differential feed again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my left needle back in and I'm gonna go back to um, four threads. Now, you, it comes with a needle inserter. Both of the sergers I've demonstrated do. What's really important when you are putting your needle in, it's important that the needle is all the way up. So by using the needle inserter, it makes sure that it just makes that a little bit easier for you. So I kind of just place the point of the needle down in there. I'm just gonna loosen this screw just a little bit and then make sure that that is pushed all the way up in. If you're skipping stitches on a serger, the first thing you wanna check is to make sure your needles are all the way in. So I've inserted that and now I'll thread my left needle. I'm gonna pull my left needle threader to the left Simply push down, swipe my thread again, push it up, and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna talk about differential feed. Remember, you have a front and a back feed dogs. Your differential feed is a ratio on how the front and back feed dogs feed. So when the differential feed is at one, it's feeding out the back the same rate it's going in the front. If I turn my differential feed up, it's coming in the front faster than it's going out the back, which will draw my fabric in. If I turn the differential feed down, it's gonna pull it out the back faster than it's going in the front, so I can pull puckers out, or I could do what's called lettuce leafing. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm simply gonna push my stitch finger back in. It's that easy, it's right back in here. Um, I'm back to standard here. I'm gonna start by just turning the differential feed up so you can see what that does. So there's several different factors that will um, affect the fullness of your fabric when you're, if you want to gather or just ease. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just turn my differential feed up. And if you just need to ease a little bit, you can turn it up just a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it all the way up so you can see what that does. 
We'll do a little bit with that. The next thing I'll do is I'll increase my stitch length in conjunction with that. But we'll just start with the differential feed first. Okay. And you can see how that's kind of easing in. So it's not a real full gather, but this is great for just like easing in fullness in a full hem or shaping a sleeve cap or if you've got a fabric that's stretching out of shape, it's just gonna draw it back in nice and smooth. So that's just adding, that's turning differential feed up. Now I'm going to actually increase my stitch length with the differential feed turned up, and you'll see it's going to even make it fuller. And now I'm going to add extra needle tension. I'll turn my needle tensions up and now I've got a really full gather. So there's three things that affect the fullness. The amount of differential feed. This is just a little differential feed, just shaping that. Your stitch length. So with an increased stitch length, I got an even fuller. And then with needle tensions turned up, I got it really full. There's also a... Um, a gathering foot that will work with this and you can actually gather and attach at the same time like you can with the ruffler as well. So those are some techniques on the air thread. An another thing with the air thread serger here on the 664P I mentioned the spreader if you do a two thread technique. I don't have to lose that little spreader unit. It's actually attached right here and I can just simply hook this right in here when I wanna do a two thread technique. And those are things that we'll probably share, share more with our tips and tricks. The other advantage of this serger, in addition to how easy, easy it is to operate and accessible, is that it is run on ball bearings. So this serger is very, very strong. Let's go with, uh, there's three, let's try six layers of denim. So if you're looking for a little more advanced serger, very, very easy to operate, very powerful, easy to switch from one thing to another, give you everything you need on a serger, but so very easy to thread and operate. The Janome Air Thread 2000D Serger is for you. It's an incredible value for the price. So again, be sure to subscribe, click on the bell so you'll get notified when we do new videos and Comment, let us know if there's serger techniques you wanna see and if there's another machine you'd like us to review.